So, um, let's get started. Call the meeting to order at, I guess it's 7.05 or something like that. Yep. Are there any comments um, for items not on the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Additions or changes to the agenda? All right, we'll get started. Jay, are you able to join us now to do the report? And Cliff, can you call up the report? Yep. Thank you. Jay. Yeah, no problem. So the speakers are working? Yes, but I don't know if they can hear you. So you need to We see. can hear you. There you go. You're all set. Hello. Hi, Jay. Hi there. How are you? I'm okay. Life is busy. It's okay. Yeah, little computer issues, huh? Always are. Well, I try to do on the phone, and then that doesn't. There's no good options there, and then we have speaker issues here. But I think we got it figured out. So all right. So what thank you very, care? thank you very much for all your great work on this challenging huh. matter. Um, somebody else joining us, Cliff? Yeah, Alfie just came on board. Oh, okay, great. So um, I've read your report. It's very detailed. Thank you. Other board members, I'm assuming they've read this as well. So I don't know that we need to go into everything in the report. It's a public document. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. Um, but I would like to note for the record and thank Ms. Ms. Truman for complying and doing what was asked of her. So I'd like to have our thanks to her on the record. Um, anything of note? Jay, that you would want to point out to us? I don't think so. I mean, as you saw, you've got the report, uh, public records. Um, I, the, the thing I would say, I, I know this is difficult for the landlord. Uh, I think it's difficult for the tenants. Um, you know, I can't take sides in it. That's not the role of the health officer. Um, it, it, I will say that the apartment was in vastly greater shape when I saw it uh, at the time of this report than it was on the previous um, so that's great. I mean, the ultimate thing was to have, uh, I want a safe place uh, for the two kids and the woman that are down there. Um, I don't know how to fix the issues that the landlord is having there. That's, you know, that really has to be between them. So right. um, that's not uh, our role to get involved in that. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, you know, and I'm happy. I mean, hopefully they can work this out. Uh, at this point, I'm comfortable with Things as they are, uh, I think at some point the, the mildew, this, the bathroom needs to be reworked a little bit. I think that would fall to the landlord to try to connect with her and allow someone to come in, assess it and fix it. I didn't find mold, uh, you know, that was a great concern. It's just a small bathroom and it doesn't have good ventilation and uh, it's wintertime. So it's a difficult, it's a difficult spot, but everything, that and being you said, said, and you said the window is up really high, right? It is. They are all high. Uh, you know, I'm not sure how, you know, in, in terms of when this is probably started as an apartment or first led as an apartment, the windows may not have been an issue at that point. I don't know when these uh, rules and regulations came out. I mean, ultimately, they are difficult to, without a ladder to get up to and get out, uh, let alone trying to open them or for firefighters to get in. Uh, the only saving thing for me is that there are two good wide open doors to get out on both ends near the bedrooms um, and access is pretty good at this point. That would be my only concern, but and again, I, I don't know what the status was when it was first led as an apartment you know, years ago. So at this point, I'm comfortable with how things are from a health officer standpoint uh, and again, I know it's difficult for the landlord and, and you know, I've left information for the tenant for her to access anything, any resources that would help her with her situation in terms of, you know, financial or any other kind of assistance. And the, the, tenant, the landlord certainly has those same options and, and is aware of those things as well. Okay. So the, the, the role, the, what the select board needs to do tonight is acknowledge that they've reviewed the report. Right. Um, and if you think the matter is under control, then the select board would um, make a motion to close the case in this matter. 
Correct, and I would be good with that. Select board, any questions? Uh, no, I did have an opportunity to review the report and thank you, Jay, for taking the time to put it together for us. Um, it looks to me like uh, the areas of concern were all addressed. Um, so that probably should be noted for the record as well. Um, and I have no further questions. Okay, <clears throat> Rose? Uh-oh, is Rose gone again? Rose has dropped off. Ah. <laughs> Sounds like me. Yeah, well, we can't do any kind of a motion or anything until she's back. Yeah. Um, so you got a real OJT, didn't you, Jay? What was that? You got some on-the-job training. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You know, there are different options that come out for health officers. I do from time to time see uh, different trainings, webinars, and whatnot. And most of the time, they are scheduled at times when uh, those of us that work are, are not free to partake of those. Uh, and, and some of those uh, trainings involve some of these kinds of things. So um, sometimes they, they you know, sometimes they record them, and you can listen to them later. Yeah, that may be the case. And I yeah. know that our attorney has been a great help. I've also communicated a number of times with the health department uh, with a number of questions. So um, I, I got a lot of guidance from agencies uh, within the health department. So uh, it all made it possible. So Very good. Yeah. Okay, Rose, you're back. You should have audio now, Rose. <laughs> Uh, are you there? I'm back. Okay. You know, for how many of a few minutes it might be. Well, <laughs> while you're while you're here, um, did you have a, any questions you wanted to ask Jay about the health officer report before we close the case? Oh no. No, no. It looked uh, complete to me and. Um, just want to say thank you, Jay, for all your hard work on it. No problem. Happy to do it. Okay. Um, so I would make a motion that the board accept Jay's final report and close the matter. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. You're ready to vote. Um, yep. I'm a, I'm an, I'm an I. Cliff? I. Rose? I. All right. Thank you so much, Jay. You're free to go or you can stay. I'm going to go because I have other items I need to work on. So thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your help on it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. And... I didn't hear from Toby, so I'm assuming there's no operations manager updates. And up next, um, I thought, oh, there's Alfred. Are you there? I am. All right. Um, without naming any names, can you give us a status on filling the positions? Uh, there's only been two applicants. I've scheduled a interview for Wednesday for one of them, and I haven't I haven't scheduled for the second one yet. But you're going to interview both, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have any leads on filling the temporary position? Uh, nothing solid. No, I. Okay. No. Okay. I'm spreading the word and trying to you know trying to find somebody, but it's yeah, it's a hard one to fill. Okay. Um, another item we wanted to talk about, and I think this is, I know that everybody in the town garage is stressed and spread thin right now. So this is not a like immediate thing that we'd like to do, but we'd like to have some, um, and I think Neil has offered to do some training with the road crew on uh, cutting ash trees, hazardous ash trees on the roadside which would probably be a, a great benefit, especially um, with regard to our insurance and making sure that, you, you know, the road crew knows which trees are to cut and getting the approval of the tree warden to, to cut them. 
So Neil, do you have some ideas of how you would handle this training, what you would like to do? Uh, you know, the Conservation Commission talked about um, kind of opening it up to the road crew to cut ash while they were working along the roadside because there are so many of them and a lot of them are gonna become hazardous. And, um, and so that's where it came from and just mostly wanting to make sure that they were comfortable with it and knew what trees were ashes. And, um, and also make sure everyone there knows the kind of risks around it because they can become dangerous if they are unhealthy. You mean dangerous when you cut them? Yes, yeah. Okay, can you explain that a little more? Yeah, ash trees are very brittle. And so if they become um, infected by the ash borers or otherwise unhealthy, they, um, they break easily. And if you're felling them, then big pieces can break off and they're, they're kind of can be scary. Um, so I just wanted to offer to, you know, help with ash tree identification and signs to look for to, to tell if they're something to avoid if there's danger there, I guess. So what would you do? Would you go with the road crew down, say, Peak and Brook or something and mark trees or how would you do that? Uh, mostly just walk and look at trees and talk about them. Yeah, somewhere like the peak where there's um, some ash trees and they can see examples of it and, um, and just to talk, talk it through. Yeah, it sounds like a great opportunity. Um, but, you know, I don't, I, it's no rush on our end. We just wanted that to be a, an option for them to work on when they do have time. So that, so that we can be making headway with it. Yeah, so we're ahead of the, I think CALS is doing really well on working with this new issue of emerald ash borer and the hazardous trees and all that. So I appreciate everybody's willingness to work together on this. Stephanie? You're on mute, Stephanie. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that identification of ash trees is not always so simple, um, in, especially in the winter time, um, because there's other trees. Is it the basswood nail that looks? The bark is a lot like the ash, and um, we were when we were marking ash trees um, along one of the roads where we were marking ash trees. You know, it's like I said, is that an ash tree? You know. So it's not always so easy. It's, it's not that it's necessarily, you know, we're not trying to say that the road crew, you know, is ignorant. It's just that it, it is can be confusing if you're not like a forester to identify actually what are the ash trees, especially in winter. I mean, in the summer when we did the inventory, you know, you could look up at the canopy and and kind of you had some ways of knowing what what it would look like, you know, what the leaves look like or the, you know, how they grow. Anyway, even then sometimes it wasn't really obvious. So I, I'm just encouraging um, this to happen before trees are cut. And, you know, and just kind of echo what uh, Neil's saying. And that is that, you know, where we all talked about, you know, some different possibilities of what to do. And, you know, we know that cutting trees not only can be dangerous, but is also expensive. And that's why I think it was, I think the select board agreed to this. And it was just, you know, when the road crew is doing its regular work and comes across ash trees that, you know, could be posing a hazard, you know, if they're leaning toward the road or whatever, um, you know, they could take them down in their normal, just normal course of work. I think that's all we're saying. Okay, Alfred, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, just that. I think it's a good idea. Some of the road crew probably would struggle determining what an ash tree is. I myself won't have a problem. I know I know trees fairly well. Um, but yes, I would be happy to meet with Neil and have a session. Um, but I, I, as we all know, it's not going to happen right away because I got all I can do to keep up with the snow. Um, right now, but if the weather happens to uh, recide or get some 
cold, dry air or whatnot, then that's, you know, that's definitely something we can put on the agenda. Yeah, and it might be good if, if we can get another full-time person hired to do the training after you get somebody else on board. Yeah. So, we, yeah. you know, so we can just do one training. Well, trust me, I'm working as hard as I can on that. Yes, I know you are. Three guys just don't cut it. It's just not, it's not, uh, it's hard it's on us. It's not sustainable, I know, what you're doing right now. So we appreciate yeah. everything you're doing. And you you saw the email that I forwarded from Sarah Gallagher? Yes. Yeah. That was very nice. Very nice. It's nice to get some, have some appreciation, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so how would you like to leave this when you have some time, uh, you know, if you designate some time that... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say when I get my crew uh, up to speed, then I can call Neil and we can get together and make an appointment or, you know, I don't know if conservation members want to be there or if it's just Neil and the crew. I don't know how elaborate you want to be with this, but... I don't... It doesn't feel like it needs to be elaborate to me. Drew offered to come along too, so maybe he would join in, but um, yeah. you know, whatever works for you guys. Okay. Okay, okay. so we'll, we'll leave it in the minutes then that Alfred will coordinate with the tree warden or wardens. Probably Neil would be your main point of contact, Alfred. Yes, yes. As you set up a time to do the training. This is great, this is a great idea. And do you have anything else, Alfred? Um, not on the ash bore or the ash trees, I guess. Okay, but underneath um, the road commissioner portion of the agenda, did you have anything else? Um, no, I guess I guess not. I mean, we're just plowing snow. Yeah, <laughs> that's all we're doing right now, and and maintaining equipment. Um, We've had a pretty good run of breakdowns on the equipment. And so in between snowstorms, that's what we're doing is working on the, working on the machines. Yeah, so the when I talked to you the other day, you were on your way to Colchester or something to pick up the truck? Yes, yes. We had a suspension problem with the uh, 2017 Western Star. So it, I brought it to Charlie Boys to get it repaired. Um, that's back in service and ready to go. But now I've got another problem with another, with the 2019, uh, and I've got a welder coming tomorrow to hopefully rectify that problem. Great. Um, but I mean, the good thing is we have five trucks and only three drivers, so it gives us a little <laughs> bit of time, a little bit of time to work on the one that's broke. But uh, well, that's one advantage, right? Well, it's one advantage, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> About the only one. Yeah, yeah. But so that's sort of what's going on. We're just trying to keep up with it, and um, and like I said, I'm talking to whomever I can possibly find to drive one of those trucks. Okay. All right. So, we'll keep us posted. Yes. Let us let us know if you need any help. Okay, we'll do. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, nope, not unless anybody's got problems or, or questions that I may be able to answer. Cliff? You're on mute, Cliff. Base bar wasn't working again. Alfie, I was just wondering, um, do we want to expand our our net, how, how far out we're casting our net and look to advertise in some other uh, publications? Um, that some towns do um, run ads in um, seven days, for example. Yeah. I, I, I do think we should probably run it again. Uh, it, or, like you said, expand it because we only got two applicants. Okay. Um, and it's been, what, two, almost two weeks. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, we should probably run it again and maybe not leave a deadline this time, but leave it loose, like uh, open until it's filled or something. Filled. Yep. You mean have the ad say open until filled? 
Yeah, I guess we could right. do that. I don't really like that option. Yeah. So I, because then you might, you know, what if you get 25 people after you've already done interview? Do you know what I mean? It, it does. Right. But that gives us, I mean, we can just choose whomever we think is best at that time. And then it's, yeah, then true. it's, then it's not open anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing 25 people showing, <laughs> so I don't think that will be a problem. Um, okay. But I do think that we should, ex you know, extend the advertisement and. Okay. Do you think that none of these two people that apply and you're the one of them are going to be who you're looking for? Cause this is, cause if we do this, it's going to hold it up again by another probably a couple of weeks. Right. Well, maybe we should wait until after the two interviews that I plan to do. Um, one of the applicants doesn't have his license yet. Uh, he does have a permit. And so it's just a matter of time for him to take the driving test. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll find out more details about that on Wednesday. You know, when he can start, when he can, you know, all, all of that stuff that you discuss in an interview. I'll be doing on Wednesday. So maybe we wait on the expansion until after I interview these two applicants I have. Okay, what about the other applicant? Are you interviewing that person on Wednesday as well? I haven't got a hold of him yet, but uh, the last time I talked to him, he said he was pretty flexible. So I think it, it won't be a problem. I sort of chose Wednesday because that's the, the first day that's gonna be sunny. Uh, yeah. this week so uh, I mean I just can't do interviews when that when I'm trying to keep up with two routes yeah, you yeah know, it's, just, it's just too much so um, definitely got one for Wednesday and I'll try to get the other one also Wednesday maybe later in the day or something okay so why don't we leave it this way after you've done your interviews hopefully both on Wednesday why don't you um let me know if we need to run the ad again. How about that? Yep. That's fair enough. Is that okay with the board? Yeah. Rose, are you good with that? Yeah, I was just wondering whether or not he needed to run an ad for the temporary part-time position. Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. That's that's a good question, I guess. Did you hear me? Yeah, he's answering, Rose. Yes, and it's a good question, and it might not be a bad idea, except yeah. for if you advertise that, then you have to have a, a stop date. So, I mean. Well, if we can leave this, right. if we can leave the other one open, we can advertise. Yeah, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. We can, we can run a temp, we can run an ad for the temporary. Yeah, I would say let's see where yeah. Alfie ends up after these two interviews. And then if we need to run ads for both positions, we can. Or if we just need to run an ad for the one position, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'd say probably let this week go, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I have a question for Alfred, completely different subject before he leaves. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about Chapin Road, and I just wanted to ask Alfie how um, do you do you, does the town maintain that's a class four road, right? Well, uh, Chapin Road is class three for a ways, and then it turns to class four. But I'm not sure which end of the road are you talking about. Well, if you're coming from Lightning Ridge. Okay, so that is class three for probably a mile and a half out there. Is and it really? It, huh. and, Yes, and then it turns to class four at the mailboxes, where there's oh, several yeah. several mailboxes. That's where it turns to class four. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Okay, so but you maintain it year round then, of course, because it's if it's class three. Yeah. Um, because what we're going to be talking about is um, it's too narrow. It's a one lane road basically, and it's too narrow for cars to park on. So when we get to the town forest there's really no place for people to park if they want to 
get into the forest from Chapin Road. Um, so we're talking about um, the, the possibility of creating a little parking area actually in the forest, you know, when you first, when you would first go into the forest. Right. From, Cha from Chapin Road, Stephanie? Yeah, so you, so, you know, actually. So why don't we, I guess we're leading into the next agenda item. I don't know if you want to listen, Alfred. Yeah, it sounds like I should probably hear this. Yeah, okay, you want to go ahead, Stephanie? Sure. Yeah, so, go ahead and explain. Yeah, so you have this town forest there, and it's a lovely forest. The Conservation Commission took a walk in there last summer or fall. And um, it's a lovely forest, but access is a real problem. Um, there, The class, the, the Chapin Road actually goes through all the way to the Pekin. It goes, but it's not a road there, but it... Technically, it's Shapen Road, and it's, I guess, a class four then, and it goes through the forest, and it comes out at the Pekin. It's really a very, very rough trail. And it goes, when it gets out of the forest, there's some distance to go before you get to the Pekin. So you're, on, you're going across private land on the town's road. And it's quite a, it's a distance, and it's very, very rough. So, um... We would like, the Conservation Commission would like to be able to have a public access on Chapin Road from Chapin, excuse me, from, yeah, from the Chapin, the real road, Chapin Road, rather than, the, rather than the Pekin. And so we were looking at it, we were looking at the maps, and it looks like the forest kind of gets narrow as it comes out to the road and we were what we were but it's surrounded by private property so our thought was we should probably have a survey done of this relatively small area when you first enter the forest from Chapin Road and then once we have the boundaries established maybe a small parking area could be created so that people could park there to access the forest um, so that's that's what's on the agenda because I wanted to talk to the select board about the possibility of getting um getting it surveyed um starting out with but any, anyway that that was the point and I was just also trying to kind of orient people toward what's there you know where you have this road so you say it's class three to the mailboxes then it continues a little ways on class four and then it kind of, as I recall, it kind of bears to the left. If you kind of go straight, maybe a little to the right, there's the Blackberry, is it called Blackberry, Blackberry Ridge? Ridge. Black, yeah, Blackberry Ridge or something. Tom, um, yeah, Tom Cronin's here and he lives there. Um, and anyway, and so, um, and that's just a private subdivision. Um, but there's really, as I said, there's really no place for people to park there and, um, I mean, Tom has kindly offered his driveway for, you know, a couple of people, but, you know, it would really be nice to have maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 car little parking area, something like up for um, um, the Fen, the, um, you know, on George Road, that yeah. little parking area there. Do you, so would you, would the parking area be in the forest or would it be on the, it would have to, I think it would have to be. I don't think there's any room. Um, you'd be blocking, I think, the access to Blackberry Ridge unless you actually went into the... Um, so, right, so right now, it's really hard for people to access the forest, and it's a town forest that's supposed to be open for the public, right? Yeah, and the Conservation Commission's interested in creating some trails as is the trails committee we've talked with with uh, tom blatchley too and really interested in in creating some trails in there it's a lovely forest it's got this amazing area of ferns um so yeah it would be really nice to be able to access it from shape from shape and road does does the forest have road frontage on that class four yes it does it comes right out well actually it's the the Chapin Road actually continues into the forest. If you look at the maps, you can see that the, the road itself used to just continue through the forest out to the Pekin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that, still a that, class four road, technically. Right. That shouldn't, yes, it is very much. Yeah. And so that shouldn't be a problem. I was thinking of 
if it was not, if it didn't have road frontage, we'd have to get an easement from a landowner to to establish a, a parking area. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's, it continues. So it's the Chapin Road, and then it goes into the Chapin Forest there. And But there, as I said, there isn't room on the road, you know, and it is private property all around it, except for the town property, the town forest property, which is the town's, which is why we thought really, we can see that really the only solution to this is to, to try to create a little parking area when you first go into the forest. But right now we need to know what the property, the property boundaries are. And, that, and, that, and that's the reason for the survey. Yeah, we just want that area surveyed. We don't need the whole forest survey, just not, yeah. you know, enough of that area that we would be wanting to use for parking. So how would you go about finding somebody to do a survey to get us an estimate on the cost? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, you know, I mean, the only surveyor I know is Paul Hannon. Yeah. I haven't contacted him. I haven't taken any action at all until I talk to you. You know, I suppose I could call Paul and just, I mean, you know, it's hard to get out there now. I don't think now right. is time to do it, but, you know, because I have absolutely no idea what surveyors charge or what it would cost. I don't know if any of the rest of you do. Well, my, that was going to be my question is it seems like you would have to wait until the ground clears of snow to do the survey. But maybe not. I don't know. I would think so. Um, yeah, surveying can get pricey um, and you would want definitely want to do it after the thaw. Um, it, um, it's kind of driven partly too by how large an area you need to have surveyed. So you may be able to find someone who's willing to do it uh, for fairly cost, cost uh, effective price point. Um, and of course, Paul's a resident. I mean, Paul might, you know, he might be willing to, might do, be willing to do some pro bono yeah. or partially. Yeah. Give us yeah. something. But I just, really want, I really wanted you, you, you know, sort of your permission for us to proceed with mm -hmm. at least, you know, trying to find a surveyor and getting some kind of estimate for what it would cost. Rose, do you have any thoughts? I think it's a great idea. I mean, it's an asset to the town. And what good is it if people can't park there to go on a little hike or something? So, yeah, I mean, I would be in favor of um, having the Conservation Commission do a little legwork and uh, find out how much it would cost to do um, a partial survey. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tom, did you have any Thing you wanted to weigh in on? Uh, no, thank you for asking. Okay, well, thank you for offering to let people park in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that publicly, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody pays attention. Nobody pays attention to us. <laughs> All right, so I don't think we need to do anything as far as a motion or approving a cost or anything until. The Conservation Commission can come back to us with some more information. So okay. if you guys work on that and let us know, we'll put it on a future agenda. We will. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are pursuing it. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you, Neil. I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else, Alfred? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Okay. Very good. We'll move on then. Town okay. meeting prep. Thank you, Cliff, for your work on this so far. <laughs> yeah, we got a, a lot of ground to cover. Um, so for the benefit of everyone, I have uh, secured our update to our Zoom license so that we can now run the informational meeting using a webinar format, which will give us more flexibility to conduct that meeting. Um, I started a, a checklist, as it were, of things we need to do and things we need to consider in advance of that meeting. I can give you, a, it's, it's a document work in progress, so it's not completed yet, but I can give you a sneak peek if you'd like to see it. It's actually, I've even updated it since I sent it out earlier today. Um, 
see if I can find it. How are you doing, Judy? Good. So, um, can everyone see that okay, or do you need it to be larger? Let's see it. Okay. So, um, first off, I imagine some of the different uh, uh, point people we might need to pull this off. Obviously, there has to be someone who's actually hosting the meeting using our town's Zoom license. Um, imagine that we would have uh, co-hosts who serve a variety of functions, um, someone to assist the host in the overall managing of the deployment of the meeting, uh, helping out with any technical issues people might have, uh, occasionally providing a uh, tutorials periodically through the meeting to remind people how they can function on Zoom. And also, of course, managing anything that needs to be screen shared with all of the attendees. Uh, of course, we'll, like our regular meetings, we'll have a moderator. Um, but to assist the moderator, we'll have people who will monitor chat as well as monitor when people are in the meeting, raising their hands using the Zoom device, uh, being able to acknowledge when there's questions. There is also a tool that the webinar format gives us, which is called a um, Q&A. It works kind of like chat, but it's got a little more oomph to it because people can pose their question and then other participants in the meeting can upvote the question if they say, hey, yeah, I had that question too. So that allows us to look at the questions that people have asked or are asking and see which ones we might want to respond to first because we would address several people's questions simultaneously. Um, then we, I imagine that we would also need people to um, admit people, monitor the waiting room, admit people into the meeting, make sure that their, their name, their full name is visible. So we know who's speaking or asking questions or whatever. And we had talked too about the possibility of if we think we need it of maybe having a timekeeper who just kind of helps Gus out, letting him know if something's going extra long. Gus does a pretty good job at that, so we may not need a timekeeper, but it's something to keep in mind. Also, we'll have panelists. Um, we, of course, the select board will be panelists. Um, the, the treasurer will probably need to be able to address some questions that might come up. It's also possible that some people may say they'd like to speak to a particular item on the warning like Kellogg Hubbard, Hubbard Library or something like this. Uh, in a case like that, we would actually be able to take someone from the audience, allow them to join us as a panelist, they can make their presentation and then we could return them to the audience. But it'd be good if we could identify these potential um, guest speakers in advance so that we've got a better idea of being able to manage the flow of the meeting. Of course, uh, we'll need uh, Katie to be taking minutes for us. And um, then there'll be the attendees themselves, the registered voters. And um, OK, thank you, Denise. Um, anyone who's interested, obviously, would be able to attend as well. We also talked about the possibility of enlisting someone in the community. Tom Frost came to mind as um, maybe we could contract with him to help people in advance of the meeting, figure out how to set up Zoom on their uh, computer and show them a few uh, tips and tricks for running Zoom. I don't know if this is something that uh, we would want to consider, but it, it's actually not a bad idea because I do know there are people out there who uh, half computers are a little leery about their level of computer savvy and tech ability. Zoom is pretty easy to use, but if someone wanted help, it might not be a bad idea for us to have the capacity to offer that. Okay. Also start compiling um, some best practices and resources, things that we need to consider. It would be helpful, I think, if we publish an online tutorial telling people how to utilize Zoom and how the meeting will play out. This is something we could post onto the website as well as Front Porch Forum. And okay, that's what I was just gonna ask. Yep. 
We would also want to uh, probably use Front Porch Forum, uh, come up with a means for people to be able to submit their questions in advance of the meeting uh, so that we could already have those questions in front of us. And it would also give us an opportunity to, if it was a question was more involved and required a little research to answer fully, we'd have the advantage of being able to do that as well. So Cliff, when we, when all the stuff with COVID started, we set up a separate emergency management email. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense or would it be more, cause more problems than it solves to have a separate email account for people to use to email questions to that specific account? Yeah, I was thinking that too, Denise. Um, I was leaning towards the idea of creating a unique uh, email account or we could use the Callus uh, administrator account, that one is still active. But I like the idea of just creating a, a fresh account because the, the ADM account gets a lot of other emails in it. Yeah. And if we had just one account that just exists for people to submit their questions, um, you know, we could have two or three of us who are monitoring that, acknowledging people's questions when they come in. And, uh, and we would have to be keeping tracks of other emails that are coming into the account as well. And maybe that's to take, to take some of the burden off of Judy, if Katie was willing, maybe she could keep a running list of questions and you know somehow this question was asked by five people. And is that something that you could do, Katie, if Judy thinks that's a good idea? Did you get our names reversed? Like Katie's taking minutes and then I would um, make sure. No, that I'm, talking to, I'm talking about this email account that we're thinking of oh, oh, setting oh. up ahead of time so okay. people could ask questions that maybe Katie could keep a list of all the questions okay. before town meeting to give you a little relief because I know you're, um, you know, oh, pretty to... thin. Just trying to get ready for the election. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, we can we can work. We we can uh, see how it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Katie. All right. So we'll we'll focus on this some more um, later in the week because we've yep. got to get these set up. Yep. Uh, we also want to set dates for the the trainings and and uh, rehearsals. I imagine two rehearsal sessions. The first one. Uh, for the people who are going to be um, acting as host and co-host and the various duties. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of a dry run to check the technology and, you know, see if there's any hiccups that we need to um, smooth out. Um, the second session would be more of a dress rehearsal where we mimic the meeting and we have all of the people who were acting as hosts and co-hosts and panelists attending. We also invite members of the public to attend, gives them an opportunity to practice using Zoom and see how that works, familiarize themselves with it, and um, basically do a, a practice run of what we'll be dealing with at the actual meeting itself. I think session one, we could keep it somewhat limited and not have to, and not expect Gus to attend that one, but do a session two where Gus is available, I don't want to take up a lot of his time in session one, but maybe session two. What do you think? Yep, I agree. Okay. All right, so what in can fact, happen? You know, in the first session, we wouldn't necessarily need everyone who's listed up here as a panelist. If we just no. had a representation of some of those people, we'd be fine. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, Actually, I should probably change this document a little bit and put Gus into the role of a, a panelist rather than a co-host. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. And yeah, and then and you, you know, and you said you purchased the upgraded license. We've already got the upgraded license. Um, just a few other quick bullet points to consider. We probably want to prepare a, a PowerPoint presentation with individual slides for each of the articles on the warning um, so that we can have that up on screen for people to see as we're discussing them. Um, okay, rather, rather than having like this document like we have tonight, right? Yeah, I think it would be cleaner if we did it as a PowerPoint series. So of have slides. each 
each article have a PowerPoint. PowerPoint slide. slide correct. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. I don't know how much work that is. Uh, I don't think it'll be too difficult. We don't have to make it really fancy. No, it just has to be the text. Right. Um, and then we'll probably want to have a simplified version of the online tutorial that we can periodically put up on the screen during the meeting, just mm -hmm. to remind people how to conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I also imagine for myself and the uh, stage manager that we create a library of canned responses that we could send out as general text messages to everyone in attendance, uh, you know, reminding them to keep their mics muted when they're not speaking, mm -hmm. things like this. Um, it wouldn't be an extensive list, but it would save it because then we just copy and paste it into the text box and hit send. Yeah. Um, and then if there's anyone who wants to make a special presentation or if as we're thinking about the rollout of this meeting, um, we update people on projects, maybe somebody asked questions about the town hall. Uh, we might consider running that uh, wonderful video that Artie made with John uh, in the course of the meeting. So other things like this to be thinking about. Okay, now I'm not exactly sure what my role is going to... Well, that's pretty much it. I will put this document into the town meeting folder. I will be updating it periodically. There's also some links in there that um, people might find helpful uh, thinking about the meeting, but if you have other ideas of other things we might consider, please uh, let me know. Well, I'm thinking you, you might think about contacting, it's Lisa Goodell at Vermont League of Cities and Towns. She's kind of like the moderator when VC VLCT hosts Zoom trainings. So she mm -hmm. might be somebody good to just say, hey, what have you learned? What tips can you give me? Um, she, you know, she's really great to deal with, so I'm sure she'd find some time to chat with you. Okay, I'll make a note to myself. Now, are we going to want, um, we can think about this, you know, we don't have to figure it all out tonight, but are we going to want somebody there from Woodbury, East Montpelier Fire Department um, to be available to answer any questions about um any questions about that? I'm just, I guess I'll have to look through the, maybe I'll look through the warning and see who we think we might need to contact to have on, on hand. Maybe we want Craig Lyon available to give a little spiel about the library. Agreed. That's, that's why I had the note here that we should definitely uh, try and identify any yep. likely or probable possible guest speakers. Um, okay, I can work. I can start working on part of that um, by looking at the warning. Okay, great. That'd be great. Okay. Katie, do you have any thoughts on this? From what, from your perspective of what you'll be doing and your knowledge of computers, which is a lot better than mine. I think the project, the project management document looks great. I don't, I don't see any holes. Um, I'm happy to help with people who want help in advance, someone to talk to, to practice using Zoom or something. You could add me to that list if there's a way to help people in the community ahead of time. Great. Okay, great. Thank you, Katie. Judy, um, I don't know if you had any additional inputs or whatnot. And of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier in an email today, I'm sure we'll be meeting again in an office staff meeting and we can you know drill down into a little more detail on some of these as the need arises yeah my only thought is um time is of the essence this is a the real deal is a week from saturday yep um so scheduling the two practices i mean the first one probably won't be that difficult to schedule because it's a limited number of people um and i'm happy to do anything i just need training um and but it seems like we would need to schedule the one that has a larger number of people practicing we need to schedule it pretty soon so that people can clear their calendar mm -hmm. so we're going to be having a staff meeting on wednesday why don't we focus in on some of that on wednesday morning okay i'm i don't have that on my on the on this wednesday okay so i for some reason, it's not on my calendar, but I'll make sure that Sandra and Barbara know. Okay. You think Great. That Thank gives you so us much. 
if we wait until Wednesday to uh, through that, um, Judy, you think that still gives us enough time to schedule both trainings? Uh, or does I'm, it think, I'm thinking that if we could possibly do the first training on Friday, the 12th. Okay. And see how that goes. Yeah, just, gonna... just see who's available. Yeah. And um, because yeah, I mean, even if it's just... we need to, some of these positions we haven't filled yet, so we have to figure out right you know, who can we who can we likely uh rope in to help us out um okay let's yeah so let's think about that um and talk about it on wednesday katie what is your availability to i know you're not available during the day right well, um for a friday yeah to be honest it's brian's birthday so i haven't even asked him what he wants to do yet but oh. I, I, <laughs> um, okay, you got all week. Are we are we saying like an hour in the in the middle of the day? Is what you're thinking? Yeah, either I, late. I, I don't late think it's going to be more than an hour. Yeah, I suspect I'll be able to make it. Okay. okay. And then we we can get Barbara, and um, I'm sure we can we can round up some other people. I don't think that'll be a, you know we want to keep it limited, but yet um see how it works yeah maybe denise we could um get an email going suggesting um who else might be willing to step in and volunteer to help out yeah i can email several different you know i'm thinking somebody like stephanie she's home during the day yeah, um scott bassage might be willing scott to help bassage out. jan olson um you know, these are people that I know are, you know, around during the day. Okay. So I can start thinking about that and we can see how many we want to have. And then I can contact people for sure. Okay. Maybe you and I can have an offline discussion and talk about the, the roles that we need to fill. Okay. That would be good. And we've lost Rose again. Yep. So you could maybe just call in on phone. You want me to call her? I think, I mean, it, we're actually doing pretty good. I don't know how much, um, there is one, one thing we need to do that's going to take a vote, but it, I don't know how much other stuff, I don't know how much you have for updates under IT and town hall. Um, not much there at all. We have the second line um, activated at town hall. I need to... Wait, you mean no more calls from Seacoast? Well, I got to put aside some time to go over and check it out because, as I understand from the email that Judy sent, they, they had to do a little voodoo to get the second line working properly. Hi, do you want to just call in by phone? <laughs> <laughs> on my computer and... Um you know, about connectivity, and and so actually I'm going to take a picture of this error message, so tomorrow when I call Comcast, I'll remember what it says, but, um... So I have you on speakerphone right okay, now. good. Hi, everybody. <coughs> Can everybody hear Rose? Hi. Greetings. Okay, thank you, Rose. Um... I'm sorry about all the problems. Well, not your fault. No. So we were just um, finishing up on the informational meeting. More, more info to come. Stay tuned. Um, Cliff, did you have any quick updates under Town Hall, Friends of Town yep. Hall? Like I say, we've got the second line activated. i got to make some time to go by the hall and see what we have to do to get it plugged into the alarm system uh, so we can activate it with Seacoast. Um, okay. And that's all the updates I had for you. Nothing to report from Friends Of and um, nothing else on the IT or Town Hall front in general. Okay. Now, Rose, if we, if we work out, Judy, do you have anything else? No. No? Okay. I love the paneling in your back wall. Thank you. Um, I'd like to get the minutes caught up. Rose, can you look at minutes while you're on the phone on your computer? Can you at least look at minutes? 
Um, yeah, I should be able to. Yeah. You should be able to go into the Google folder yeah. and, okay. I think I may go if I'm not needed anymore. Well, you're always needed, but you can go. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can proof minutes at this point, so, or personnel issues, so. All have right. a good rest of the evening, and I'll good to see you all. I'll see you again later. Okay, thanks, thanks Judy. Judy. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, let me uh, pull up some minutes. See, there's always a way around around things, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a long way around, but there's always a way. Yep. Okay, so, so one eleven, January 11th. Is, is that the, the first one? Is that, yeah, is that the oldest one? It doesn't matter, whatever way we go. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the meeting. Monday, Are you going to? January 11th, yep. Let me make, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I got it pulled up on my computer. Yeah. Start working. There it goes. And I saw that Sharon had some edits in here they look fine to me yeah i had some edits i think those is that the ones here's what one of your edits yeah 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 they look good you guys did a good job analyzing them yeah and then some minor edits All right. Yeah, I would move to approve with the changes as noted. Okay. Sure, I'll second that. Okay, let's vote on it. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Rose? Aye. Okay, next up. All right, looks like next up is the meeting of January 18th, special meeting. If it's going to open for me. And uh, I don't think there was a lot of edits for this one. At least when no, I, I think it earlier. I think I'm, I might have made something at the top. I'm not, I don't remember. Yeah. You acknowledge that you reviewed it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have anything else. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of January, was it 18th? Yes. I will second that. Okay. Rose, you want to vote? Aye. Cliff? Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. Now we will look at the minutes from the meeting of January 25th. Okay, hopefully you can see them. Yep. Uh, I know I looked at those. Yeah, same thing here. I saw that there were some some minor edits. Nothing significant. No. Nope. I thought I made some. Did I? You see anything from me on there? I don't see anything in the sidebar. I. I think I saw some in the body. No? Oh, yeah, no, there's um, one. Did you comment that, like, on January 30th oh. or something? Yeah. Yeah. Right nope. there it says pass the required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, I think that was about the only change I had. All right. So was that a motion, Denise? Yes, that's a motion. Oh, I'll second that. Okay. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Rose? Aye. Okay, and I think the last ones are February 1st, correct? Yep. Or, oh, yeah, that says BCA. Yep. Well, February 1st? Well, we had the BCA BOA, but we also had a, a regular. No, we had a special. We had a short session. meeting. Short meeting, we went in executive session. 
discuss personnel issues. The only thing that was, well, let's see if this is Can you see him, Rose? There um, you go. Um, no, I have to go. This is the one where you gave Katie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was just last yeah. week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I would make a motion to approve the February 1 special meeting of minutes. And I'll second that. Okay, I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Rose? Aye. Okay, phew, we got through all those. Yeah, we're all caught up. Good. Yeah. I don't, does anybody have anything we need to go in executive session for? I don't. No. Okay. I do have one thing, and this comes up under old business. Okay. On January 11th, we talked some about the wood chipper that we got the refund for. Right. Um, and the check is still sitting in the vault in the town office. And we need to vote to approve to deposit um, the refund check. And I think, oh, I'd have to go look at Barbara's, what is it, like 16? I don't really think it matters as long as we are approving the deposit of the, um, okay, here it is, $16,895. And that's a refund check from, for the, um, from the VA heavy equipment refund yep. from the wood chipper. And so, I, wasn't there some question that maybe we were going to talk to Jim Barlow about this because if we accepted the payment, but we're beyond that already, we yeah, it's okay to accept the payment. Yeah, we're beyond. We're done with them. Yeah, we're just le losses. Right, lesson learned. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that sounds good. All right. I mean, uh, yeah. Do you need a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Yeah. Do you want to second it, Rose? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Cliff, any comments? No comments. Ready to vote. Okay, I'm an I, Cliff. Aye. And Rose. Aye. All right, and as soon as Katie gets me the draft minutes, which she will miraculously, and I don't know how she does it, <laughs> they'll be done like tonight or tomorrow morning. <clears throat> and I'll send the office uh, the blurb out of the minutes. Sounds good. All right, is there anything else to come before the board tonight? We're getting done in record time, you guys. <laughs> well, that's because we can't talk too long because we might lose connection, right? I guess. Yeah. Well, let's see, it's um, forcing us to be more efficient. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm off tomorrow, so I'm going to get in touch with Consolidated again. Now, do you have these problems with, I don't know, you don't do Zoom with other stuff, but do you well, have... Well, I, I actually do. I have a Thursday night prayer group. And that one seems pretty good. Um, I don't really have as many problems as I do. Hmm. And I don't know why. Um, but, yeah, this is really pretty bad. But, you know, when you think about it, we've been doing Zoom meetings since, what, last March? Well, it wasn't it, quite, yeah, some April or May. Or April or May. Yeah. May. But yeah. it always seems like it's really just gotten worse, like maybe since around the holidays. I know. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, so I don't know if it has something to do with the number of people that are home and, you know, like if they're sucking out all my juice. Because I'm the last one on the line, you know, the the wires come up and we're the last ones on Lightning Ridge. So hmm. I don't know, but um, this last error message said something about my modem. So, And this is the original modem when we got... Um, internet service yeah you know so it might be the modem so anyway well thank you everybody and um i'll make a motion to adjourn at 808 all right and don't forget we're meeting monday night um the only thing i can think of to meet monday night in a special meeting as we agreed <coughs> in our minutes of february 1st to meet with alfred mm -hmm. on um Monday night, if we post, if there's nothing else, and we agreed to postpone that, there's not. A, I don't know if there's enough people here tonight to make that decision, but we could instead, um, perhaps meet with Alfred at 6:30 or something on the 22nd, rather than having so that everybody can have a Monday night off. What do you? What's your?
pleasure, board members. Yeah, I, I support that. I don't know if Rose would be able to be there at 6.30 yeah, or not. Yeah, let me go in the kitchen. Okay. Um, Island, Monday the 15th, I'm working 9.30 to 6. So, I, you know, I could meet, but probably not till 7. Yeah, so maybe on the 22nd. I mean, I don't think it's going to take long with Alfred in executive session, do you? Yeah. That we could maybe meet at 6.30 or 6.45. Yeah. And then give everybody the Monday night off because that might also be an option to do a um, training. Yeah. And then if people are available, they are, and if they're not, they're not. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Oh, you mean do a um, a Zoom yeah. training in preparation for the town meeting informational thing on the twentieth? Yeah, I mean, that would give us, some, you know, some more options for yeah, dates. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah. can you put in the minutes, Katie, that we're going to postpone our discussion in executive session with Alfred that we discussed from February 15th to February 22nd? We're hoping to do it at 630, dependent on work schedules. All right. That sounds good. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good. Thanks for calling, Denise. No problem. Say hello okay. to Greg for me. Okay. All right. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Katie.